All right, for all you helicopter lovers out there, this is the episode for you. We're here in Trenton, Florida, interviewing with Composite FX and the Mosquito Helicopter. Coming up next. That's really, it's like literally finger flying. Thank you to our channel sponsors, Wix Aircraft Supply, Aviation Youth Publication, and Aero Adventure Amphibious Seaplanes. So my name is Nor Bricker, and I'm with Composite FX, and we build uh, uh, four different models of a small helicopter, single seat helicopter. And as we split the mold, this is what comes out of it. Uh, okay. This is kind of unmolested uh, after that. You can see we have some flash uh, at areas where the mold shuts. So it comes out with the, this gel coat already. It comes out with the gel coat yeah. already on it. So uh, the, these fixtures are uh, level and square for the rest of the tooling that we're using. And one of the first uh, moves that we'll do is we'll poke a hole uh, in, the, in the tower of the machine and put our first piece of metal in it. So this is an eighth wall, uh, four inch tube uh, that gets bonded on the inside uh, uh, of the fuselage another assembly that comes from upstairs in the other building and that is the uh, upper uh, upper gear mass reduction mount okay uh, and it is all tooled off of this initial piece of four inch tubing that that runs the mass so this whole assembly needs to run true so based on this datum we will take the tooling off and tool the rest of the components uh, okay. go on it. So this is essentially just a jig to be able to hold that in place while it sets up? Right, technically it's a fixture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And on the inside of the man machine, you can see various reinforcements and uh, crush zones that's, that go underneath the operator. Right. Uh, unmanned machines, we've built probably 40 or 50 of them. And uh, manned machines were on approach to 400. Uh, so we know how to build helicopters. We don't necessarily know what those applications are, but lots of commercial applications are coming out. Oil and gas is using them. Power line inspection uses it. Agriculture. Um, uh, there's there's package delivery. Uh, and any number of different things that uh, that these are being integrated into. This is a tail boom straight out of the assembly fixture. Uh, this one hasn't been massaged at all. Okay. Um, but this will go onto our assembly fixture there, uh, get trimmed and tooled such that it meets our fuselage repeatedly. Every, every machine of ours has a build sheet. And uh, this build sheet guides us on how we need to prepare the machine. Uh, and as it turns out, this machine is a kit that's going to go to California. Doors are an option for the kit, okay. and uh, they're a two-piece construction, uh, similar to the windscreens. Uh, we bend the plastic that makes up most of the door. However, these doors also happen to go into a, uh, a fiberglass trim ring uh, that holds their shape. And I don't know if these are, these are so these are not glued in yet, uh, but this gives you an idea of what this trim ring looks like. Uh, the windshields are made with vacuum. The doors, we actually create the shape with pressure. So we'll inflate the doors. We suck down the windshields. If we are going to do a factory assist or a factory build here at the facility, we conventionally paint the machine. And so this is an example of a body that we've uh, that we started painting. Um, this is a, a man machine. Um, and so typically it takes uh, two people about one week in order to prepare this for paint. And this will go into the booth, get some epoxy primer, and then we use conventional automotive paints. PPG is our supplier of choice. What is the approximate lead time on a kit from ordering today? Six months. Six months. Six months.
So you're, so you're making your own tail rotors here. Yeah, so we've been for the last uh, nine months or so, we've been building our own tail rotors. And those are comprised of uh, an 031 skin, um, as well as an aluminum tube and a titanium rod, uh, and various rivets. And so um, this metallic, simple design tail rotor skin is, uh, is very effective. Um, it's pretty low cost and we get great longevity out of it. And so here you can see an example of uh, the last build that we made. What we're looking at here is a quick build. Uh, if a kit builder wants to buy a quick build kit for our machines, it's a little premium. Um, this is, they'll get a uh, skin mounted bunch of parts uh, that keep them uh, off of their own fabrication and just keep them in assembly mode. If we're not building the machine here or providing a factory assist, we're going to crate up the fuselage and get it down the road with the rest of its components so that the kit builder can build it wherever they may be building the kit. We just talked about a California bird where a kit's gonna be made. This one happens to be going to Australia. We have a Malaysia kit there. We have a South America kit. So we, we ship all over the world routinely uh, a little bit over half of our production goes overseas. And here you can see one tail balloon crate stacked on top of another. Okay. And we can fit between these two crates, we can fit everything that you need for your helicopter in them. Wow. So we are in the final assembly building now. And uh, this is an example of a finished built machine. Uh, this is a customer built machine. And uh, we have any number of different models here. Uh, but this is where the painted fuselage is, the machined assemblies, uh, the engine assemblies all meet uh, and they get integrated uh, and put together such that the machine could be test flown. So typically this machine, the experience is considered wearing a helicopter, not necessarily flying one. Uh, and so 85 horsepower strapped to your back with 19 and a half foot rotor blade um, uh, makes for a great experience and it's a lot of power on a little machine. Uh, at 100%, uh, out of the PTO, which this says a uh, vertical PTO, we run a centrifugal clutch that uh, expands and starts to grab at about 40%. It's fully, gra it's fully grabbing at about 70%. 100% uh, is 6,000 RPM. So it's, it's automatic, it's not anything that the pilot it's has to do. It's not anything the pilot has to do. Once you get to 3,000 RPM, it starts to open up. But what it is, um, uh, it's not a very glamorous term, but it's an oversized go-kart clutch. Okay. Um, and this goes to our what we call our primary reduction. Uh, so our first reduction as, uh, assembly through a belt drive, we go then to a sprag clutch assembly. And that sprag clutch is, is uh, oriented in such a way that if the engine ever seizes, the rest of the rotating equipment will continue spinning. Uh, and in this reduction, we go from uh, 6,000 RPM at the PTO to our tail rotor RPM of roughly 2,600 RPM. And that then is coupled to a drive shaft that brings us to a splitter box. And that splitter box then, in a one-to-one -one ratio, sends a maximum eight or 10 horsepower back to the tail boom and also sends the remaining power straight up to the final reduction. Okay. Now earlier in the process we were talking about this component. This is a mass reduction mount and this is a very rigid component because you can imagine we're trying to keep this assembly nice and taut so that the belts uh, stay aligned properly. Um, and one of the reasons this machine is successful is the uh, ability for us to use cog belts as we do. Um, the cog belts are uh, very lightweight and we have no transmissions. What's the uh, service life of a belt? Uh, five years or um, uh, 500 hours. On our upper reduction, we actually have two belts. Uh, there's a redundancy up top. 
any one belt is good enough for this application, but we run two just in case. Um, conventionally, the machine sees at maximum, uh, at maximum torque of between uh, 55 and 80 foot, foot pounds uh, constant. And so, if you know anything about these belts, they're minimally used. Um, so this is a redundancy and we're really, it's overbuilt uh, like crazy. Have, over speeding this head is not really a consideration. It's often that in an auto rotation, um, you can put an extra, you can spin it up 20% uh, beyond uh, your 100% and have some cash in the bank so that when you make it to the ground and you flare, you have a lot of energy in your blades. Um, and that's not even a consideration. Uh, you do a quick post flight, make sure everything's fine, but this head is built for three times the energy that we'll ever put in it. And so compared to some conventional helicopters where if you, if you come over 10% of what the maximum rotor speed would be that the head has to be disassembled or, or inspected, um, we've got uh, a lot more capacity uh, and safety factor built into this head. This is what the operator is flying. Uh, you're seeing this in a configuration such that you might not be familiar with it. It's on its ear, but this is our final pulley. And just underneath it, through our control structure, is our swash plate. Our machine is a conventional helicopter. And where we have a cyclic and a collective. And uh, our typical foot pedal controls are cable controlled. Uh, taking off we want to give the way our rotor spins we want to give a little left pedal uh, when you're picking up at first but I want to show you the mixer assembly on how these two instruments are coordinated for the head if you move as I move my cyclic around you can see I'm moving it roughly in a round direction and you can see that it's inputting into the tubes just the cyclic it's moving my input tubes up to the swash plate and if you look up at the swash plate, which is up here, you can see roughly that's the same thing that I'm doing with the cyclic. Okay, right, so moving it around. So now, it's mirroring that. It is, mir it is mirroring it. Now at the same rate, I can also pull, pull collective and, and drop collective. And so all of that, there's five degrees of freedom here that are combined in the three mixed tubes that go up to the head. The fact that this is, some people say, oh, this isn't a real helicopter. There's nothing about this helicopter that isn't real. It's conventional, cyclic, and collective. We build in here any number of components, um, and we use some outside machine shops for our machining needs. So the Composite FX has four different models, an XE, uh, which is our base model. These days it goes for 37000 out the door before crating and shipping. May 12th, 2019. Yep. A little more expensive than that is the XEL. It's $1,000 more at 38000 It's also a kit out the door. And that is the ultralight machine. And that is roughly a stripped down XE, an XE without options, but it has floats so that we can uh, come under the criteria of part 103 with our float allowance. Following that is the XC285, which is our bigger piston engine. Uh, it's water-cooled, fuel-injected, and oil-injected. Instead of the 55 horsepower for the smaller machine, it makes 85 horsepower. And uh, that and has been lately the, the real workhorse, a sought-after model. And then finally the XCT, which is a turbine machine, solar engine, and makes about 95 shaft horsepower. It's quite the Cadillac that when we're done with it, uh, it makes all the right sounds of the, the turbine whine and, uh, and whatnot. It consumes a bunch of fuel, um, but it's quite the hot rod. And so we have four models uh, that we offer. The build time varies on what kind of a builder you have. And uh, without judging, um, some builders just want to get up in the air and they're not very detail driven. Others are much more interested in creating a masterpiece that also flies. 400 hours of assembly time putting the machine together. And at top end, we've seen some, some machines of uh, 2,000, 2,100 hours uh, once they're all put together. If you go to uh, composite-fx.com, 
you will find uh, our website and all of our information for our website. Um, it leads you to the factory here in Florida uh, where this interview was, was taken, uh, as well as it may lead you to uh, various dealers around the world, whether they be South America, Europe, uh, Australia, um, and hopefully you can find a dealer near you or you can call the factory for any questions that you might have. So what do you think guys? Pretty cool helicopter. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch today and if you're new to this channel I invite you right now to go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button and also that little bell notification for future videos. Help me encourage more people into getting into building aircraft and remember just build it.